And what I find quite alluring about this particular group of work, excuse me, their works, is its intensifying capacity. It's beautiful scratch marks underneath the gold. The decoration is much richer. Michael's asking us to get out our binoculars and to actually look deeply into the surfaces of this, uh, this work. Icons have the capacity to make us crane our necks up and to look up into uh, the world of the divine and to think about our relationship with these uh, divine figures. One of the wonderful things also about icons is that they're very fleshly, they're very surface, they're very skin-like. They remind us in the spirituality of the orthodox tradition that bodies matter. I would like to make a group of work showing to the people that every halo can be done in a very different way. Like it is engraved here very subtly. Then there are beautiful borders that take ages to do, a beautiful inscription that take time to do and care and all these things. That can be different from this one, the next one, which is relatively simple or deceptively simple if you like, and all that. And then I was fascinated by some uh, fantastic engravings I came across in the tradition and did this, uh, which again took a lot of time and then combined it with an uh, interesting halo and did uh, the so-called Imago Pietatis or Man of Sorrows. So uh, that's how the exhibition was gradually being built. And that type of icon in the East is known as Our Lady of the Passion because we have the Angels of the Passion. The reason behind uh, this intention, why did I go back to the very known uh, model or prototype was because I was um, deeply impressed and fascinated by how some iconographers, who I don't know, just see their prints do something so perfect that when you reproduce it as a print, you can't find a single kind of a mistake or anything you would really observe as a comment. <coughs> uh, St. John of Arc uh, is uh, just the first one in the series, intended series of uh, my dealings, so to say, iconic dealings with the Joan of Arc, which attracts me a lot as a story. Um, then again, going back to Halos, I uh, showed another option of uh, uh, greatly detailed, engraved, or incised Halo. This same type of Halo I used for the icon I, I've done for, for the Pope, uh, the icon of St. Benedict that I created for no, 2008. Really same type of Halo. 22 carats gold, 23 carats, 24 carats gold. So that, that gives you an example. And the, the, the gold lines within are just physically the liquid gold, the powder gold. Yeah. So St. Gerard Magella is, uh, is a commissioned work. And it is possible that uh, uh, St. Therese of Lisieux is uh, the so-called star of the exhibition. So, uh, you can observe the, the lot of engravings uh, uh, that goes floor of engravings that goes in the background there on the 23 carats gold. Is, uh, is this yeah. your is this your addition? It's hundred percent. Uh, no. First of all, this is hundred percent my creation, as well as Sir Gerald Magella is hundred percent my creation. Some of the other icons are my versions of the known prototypes from the past. Yeah. But this, I haven't seen any other icon of Saint no. Therese Orisia, so this is my creation, hundred percent. And all the elements. Uh, uh, integrated in the making of this icon are basically traditional. So what is mine is only the fact that I did not come down with the engraving to the bottom of the icon, but it just stopped somewhere halfway. For reasons I don't know, I don't, can't explain that. Just felt like doing it. Then the floral uh, nimbus or a halo is something that is not mine, and since I haven't invented it, it has been used and it's still being used, especially in Russia, contemporary Russia, by some great iconographers. Yeah. This is St. Nicholas, uh, very seldom seen like that, although uh, the images of saints enthroned are quite known. So usually, he's always depicted as a bishop anyway, as we all know, but usually half figured with a book. This time he's enthroned, and uh, I like this particular depiction, uh, not because it comes from Serbia, where I'm from, but just because I think it's one of the uh, depictions of St. Nicholas, maybe one of the most beautiful ones ever. This uh, Mary McKillop is uh, there uh, or here uh, to show us a little bit more of the diversity and versatility of the iconic approach in the, uh, in the icon making process. 
but also because the whole museum and the place is dedicated to Mary McKillop, of course. And uh, you can see here the, the examples of different uh, concepts in gilding. So this is the so-called water gilding, where you can uh, burnish the gold, polish it uh, with uh, agate stone tools, as opposed to, or juxtaposed to the, the regular oil gilding, 24 carats next to it. So you can see the mirror, like a uh, like mm -hmm. surface of the, the burnished gold there, and it just again talks about different possibilities of icon making. Now, the reason why I haven't done the whole background in that uh, mirroring the glowing gold uh, is because uh, um, we will then easily slip into the craft, meaning there will be too much of an emphasis on gilding rather than on painting. I must say that when I've done this particular icon, first of all, I've done it because uh, uh, maybe 15 years ago or some such, <coughs> I've done uh, this particular icon for the first time of a Lebanese Maronite monk, Saint Shadow, known for his miraculous healings, um, intercessions that led to miraculous healings, I did. So, uh, that looked pretty right at the time when I had done it, but I wasn't impressed with these in these last years when I revisited all I had done in the past and I said, I can do this much better and I would like to prove it to myself. Because at that time I also started exploring the and uh, uh, extending the boundaries of uh, possibilities in say borders and ornating in the icon. I thought that the beautiful monasticness or monastic simplicity and graphicness of his role would uh, tie in beautifully with his fantastic beard mm -hmm. and with, uh, with the border. So I've done it and I thought it is definitely much superior to what I have done 15 years ago.